Hi everyone, this is the notes for refraction. Uh, this is going right along with your student note template. So as you watch this, you should probably open up um, this file in your Notability and kind of take notes as you go along with this. Um, some of what I have on here is already filled out and I'll fill out the rest as we go through it. But feel free to pause the video at any time to write down things or to go back you know, if you want to listen to something again. So we've been talking a lot about mirrors um, and what mirrors do, this thing called reflection. Um, and this note uh, video is going to be about something different called refraction. Okay, so sometimes they're easy to, to mix up. Um, mirrors are reflecting things. So if you remember, a reflection is when you have, you know, a light ray striking a surface and bouncing off. What we're talking about is something called refraction, which is a little bit different. Refraction is when um, light waves are going to bend upon entering a new material. Okay, so if we have light ray striking a new material, it might bend and deflect in a different direction. So that's what refraction here is. Okay, so refraction, like we said, is bending, um, and that's when light moves from one medium to another. So remember, medium is the material through which a wave passes. Um, refraction occurs with lots of different kinds of waves. It doesn't just have to be light, uh, but um, it's based on the different material and the different properties of the material, okay? The reason that light waves bend going into a new material is because they are changing speed. And we'll talk about that in a second, okay? Because new materials have different speed limits for light. Light travels at different speeds to different materials, okay? So the bending is called refraction, okay? So here's a little diagram here. This is a light ray that's coming through probably air. It's not labeled, but we can assume it's air. And it's striking a pane of glass. Okay, so you can see that there is an angle compared to the normal. Okay, we're gonna call this the angle of incidence, just like normal, okay? But what happens when it strikes the new material, it's going to come down at a different angle here. This angle is not going to be the same as the angle of incidence, okay? And this is called the angle of refraction, okay? So make sure you keep those different in your mind. Angle of reflection is with mirrors when it bounces off. Angle of refraction is when a light ray bends when it enters a new medium, okay? Okay? So there is a law, mathematical law, that describes what this angle is going to be based on this thing called an index of refraction. So this thing is called Snell's Law. So pause the video if you want, you can write this down. Um, Snell's Law says that N1 sine theta one equals N2 sine theta two. Um, N here is this thing called the index of refraction. We'll talk a little bit about what that means in a second. Um, theta here is going to represent your angles. So angle, um, and that's always measured from the normal. Oops. Okay, we measure that from that normal dotted line there. Okay, so that's Snell's law. Okay, so N, this index of refraction, what is this? Okay, index of refraction is a ratio between um, the speed of light in a vacuum, which is like the cosmic speed limit. It's like the fastest thing, fastest um, speed that anything can travel. Okay, you can think of that as, you know, light traveling through the emptiness of space. Um, and we are dividing that speed by the speed of light in the new medium. Okay, so if we have light traveling through air, then the medium would be air. Um, if it's traveling through water, then the medium would be water. We're gonna use the terms here, speed of light in a vacuum. We use capital C for that in physics. And the speed of light in our medium, we're gonna use V. Okay, so you can think velocity, but that's gonna be in the medium compared to the vacuum, which is always C. Um, C is a constant, okay? It is three times 10 to the eighth media, uh, meters per second, or 300 million meters per second. Um, that is, a number that doesn't change. That's the speed of light in a vacuum, okay? So if this index of refraction, excuse me, is C over V, well, what is V? Okay, V is gonna be some fraction of the speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, so we're gonna use X here. X you can think of as like a percent or like a multiplying factor. 
So let's say you have the speed of light is 50% of what it would be in a vacuum. If it's half as fast, then that X would be 0.5. Um, if it's 25% as fast, it would be 0.25. Okay, so on and so forth. So really, if you plug in this Xc in for V, um, this index of refraction N is just the speed of light in the vacuum C divided by the fraction of that speed. Okay, so X times C for V there. So what does this mean? So here's an example. Let's say that we're working with water. Okay, the index of refraction for water I've listed here, um, it's 1.33. Okay, so what that means is if I plug this in to this expression here, 1.33, which is the index of refraction of light in water, that is going to be the speed of light in a vacuum, C, over X, C. X is the multiplying factor, okay? So I can actually cancel out C since that shows up both ways. So you're gonna end up with 1.33 equals one over X. Okay, flip that around. X here is actually going to be 0.75. Okay, so what this means is when light travels through water, it's only traveling about 75% as fast as it would be traveling through air, okay? Technically, our, our expression says 75% of what it would be through a vacuum, but um, if you look at the index of refraction for air, which is 1.0003, that ends up being about 99.97% as fast as it, as it is in the vacuum, so that's pretty much the same. Okay, so 75% as fast, that's pretty noticeable. Here's the reason we have different indexes of refraction. Okay, the reason why mediums have different speeds of light. Um, it has to do with the density. Okay, so over here we've got these, um, these lines. These you can think of as representing uh, like maybe the crests of our light waves. Okay, so here this would be like our wavelength, the distance between these. Okay, so if I have a really, really dense material, let's say a solid like ice or glass or something like that, um, the light is going to travel much more slowly through that material because it's so much more dense. There's so many more particles in the way that the light kind of has to go between and around. Okay, if you have a less dense material like a liquid here, the light is going to travel more quickly. And then in a gas, it's even more quickly than that. Okay, that's because the particles are further apart um, the light doesn't have to strike as many obstacles on the way. Okay, so what's changing here, um, we aren't changing this, we are, sorry, excuse me, we're not changing the frequency of the light. Okay, the frequency um, is based on the color. The wavelength does change and so does the velocity. Okay, so it's not how quickly they oscillate, it's how, um, how much distance each oscill oscillation um, covers. Okay, so here's a general rule. The less dense the material, the faster the light goes. Okay, and that makes sense. Vacuum is the least dense thing you can think of. Okay, and that's the fastest speed for light. Here's another way to look at it. Let's say we have air, okay, which is N1. And let's say this is water. Actually, you know what? Let's make this glass. It doesn't make sense that water would be a block like that. So let's say it's glass. Okay, um, so what's going to happen here is the index of refraction for air, as we probably know, is going to be lower than the index of refraction for glass because glass is denser. What that means is the light is going to be faster in the air, and when it strikes the glass, it's going to move more slowly. Okay, what ends up happening is our wavelength is going to decrease. Okay, the wave crests are going to be a shorter distance from each other. When the light travels back out into the air, okay, which has a lower index of refraction, the light is going to speed up. It's going to be faster now, okay? And our wavelengths are going to get longer. Okay, so here's an important relationship. Index of refraction is based on the density, okay? So more dense material, uh, higher index of refraction. When the index of refraction goes up, the wavelength shortens, it goes down, and the velocity gets slower, okay? So that's an important relationship there. Here's another way to look at it. The picture we just did before, this is showing light traveling at a 90 degree angle. It's going straight into a new material. 
um, you're not going to have any bending here. But if you have your light striking the new material at an angle, okay, this is where Snell's law would come into play. Okay, so this angle here is going to be the angle of incidence. This is where you start to see the bending. So here's the index of refraction. You can see that the light wave is bending towards the normal. Okay, the angle is getting closer to that 90 degree mark over here on the refraction side, okay? Bending towards the normal. So that means that your angle of refraction is going to be less than the angle of incidence, okay? Speed-wise, it's gonna be moving from a faster speed to a slower speed, okay? Um, a really good analogy for this is if you've ever been driving when it's been snowing a lot, um, if you're driving in a lane where you don't have a lot of snow on the pavement, you can feel like you go pretty fast. But if you need to change lanes and you go into an area that has more snow on it, um, it slows you down and you can actually sometimes feel your wheel, your steering wheel turn and it forces you to turn slightly, um, even though you don't necessarily want to steer in a more turned way. Um, so obviously, you know, we've got summer coming up, so you're not gonna really experience that. Um, you can also feel that if you drive into gravel or if you drive off onto the shoulder of like a dirt road, you can feel your steering wheel turn because it wants to turn your car because it's slowing you down on one side more than the other. So just kind of an analogy um, to that. All right, so let's say that the light is going through the glass and coming back out the other side. Everything gets reversed, okay? Um, what's important here is that this now is the angle of incidence because it's entering our transition between medium Okay, so the angle of incidence is now going to be lower or smaller than the angle of refraction. Okay, you can see it's bending away from the normal line and it's going from slow to fast. Okay, so we'll be working a lot more with this. Um, you'll be actually doing some calculations with Snell's Law a little bit later on, but this is just kind of a introduction to refraction. So feel free to pause the video, go back at any point that you have questions about, or email your teachers if you have any questions. Have a great day.